¿Quién? El mecánico Alfredo Moser, nacido en Uberaba, Minas Gerais, en la ciudad que vive al sur de Brasil. Un hombre de grandes ideas. Se casó con su actual esposa, Carmelinda, en 1978. Hoy es reconocido por una gran hazaña. ¿Qué? En 2002, ideó un sistema para alumbrar su casa durante el día sin necesidad de utilizar electricidad, usando únicamente botellas llenas de agua, con un poco de cloro. En los últimos años, su idea llegó a diferentes partes del mundo y se tiene previsto que para finales del 2014, un millón de hogares implementen este sistema. Moser explica que el experimento funciona por refracción de luz solar. Hay que añadir dos tapas de cloro a una botella de dos litros para evitar que el agua se ponga verde. Mientras más limpia esté la botella, mejor asegura. La idea de Moser se basa en que en el techo de la vivienda se abra un hueco, donde se coloque la botella llena de agua con cloro, se fija con resina de poliéster o silicón y según el inventor, no hay goteras, ni siquiera cuando llueve. ¿Dónde? Actualmente las lámparas Moser, conocidas como la bombilla de los pobres, se encuentran en 140 mil hogares filipinos. La idea también ha sido popular en unos 15 países más, como India, Bangladesh, Tanzania, Argentina y Fiji. Alfredo Moser encontró una manera de iluminar su casa y la de miles de personas durante el día sin electricidad, a partir de tres ingredientes simples y baratos. En Bolivia, como en muchos lugares del mundo, la electricidad no llega a todos lados, más en el campo, en el área rural. ¿Qué harías tú? ¿Qué se te ocurriría para solucionar este gran, gran problema? Copica, queremos presentarte un grupo de jóvenes voluntarios que ya están revolucionando, ya están solucionando este problema en el mundo. Vamos a ver la nota. Todo empezó en la ciudad de Manila, capital de Filipinas, en abril del 2011. Gracias al litro de luz, un invento del mecánico brasileño Alfredo Moser, un grupo de estudiantes voluntarios alumbró ese día toda una casa que no contaba con instalación eléctrica, solamente reutilizando una botella de plástico vacía, agua y pegamento. El resultado fue tan bueno que poco tiempo después fueron 10.000 casas las que se beneficiaron de este maravilloso invento, ahorrándoles a miles de beneficios el dinero que gastarían en sus costosas facturas de luz. Hoy en día, el litro de luz está volviéndose cada vez más famoso por ser una fuente de luz muy barata que no gasta electricidad y es muy fácil de hacer. ¿Cómo funciona el litro de luz? Son cinco simples pasos a seguir. Uno, en una plancha de calamina o de otro material parecido, corta un círculo que tenga el mismo diámetro de la botella que vayas a usar. Dos, llena la botella con agua y ponle tres cucharadas de lejía o 10 mililitros de cloro. Esto evitará que el agua se descomponga y se mantenga cristalizada hasta por 5 años. ¡Wow! 3. Para evitar filtraciones de lluvia, sella bien los espacios que queden entre la plancha y la botella con silicona. 4. Ahora corta un agujero en tu techo e introduce ahí la botella con la plancha. La botella capturará los rayos solares y los amplificará sin importar que sea un día nublado. 5. Disfruta de luz natural dentro de tu casa de manera barata y ecológica. Este foco no tiene efectos negativos en el medio ambiente, pues no gasta electricidad y además conviertes una botella que podría ser basura en una fuente de luz de 55 watts, suficiente para iluminar un cuarto entero. El plan de esta fundación es llegar a un millón de hogares iluminados con botellas solares para el año 2015. Gran solución, tan simple para este gran, gran problema. Si tú quieres ser parte de este grupo de voluntarios, un litro de luz entra al Facebook y tú empieza la revolución en tu casa, en tu barrio, en tu ciudad, en tu país. ¿Será que en Bolivia se nos prende el foco?
Esta comunidad fue una comunidad que se organizó bajo la orientación de la empresa electrificadora de Santander, en lo que nosotros denominamos suscriptores comunitarios. Esta exitosa experiencia que nació en Brasil, cuando el mecánico Alfredo Moser buscó la forma de iluminar su hogar y negocio durante el día, ya ha recorrido el mundo y en uno de los casos más divulgados llegó a Filipinas, de la mano de un industrial que con el ánimo de mejorar las condiciones de vida de su comunidad, ya ha apoyado la instalación de 140.000 lámparas de Moser, como fue bautizado el invento. You're going to need a galvanized metal sheet, 26 gauge, 10 by 10 inches, bottle with cement, plastic soda bottles 1.5 or 2 liters, glue gun with Sika cement, riveter, rivets, working board, sandpaper, hammer, chisel, pencil, curved metal sheet cutter. So, 
First is to get a 26 gauge galvanized steel as the lock. This one holds the bottle up uh, when you stick it on the roof. So right now, we're gonna take the bottle and you will have two guides. One larger and then one smaller by a couple of millimeters. The first one is going to be the diameter of your soda bottle. Best results, the center of the guide should be on the crest of the galvanized steel. The nice thing about having guides is that you never have to guess each and every one. So especially when you're doing several ones, it's good to have a, a thick uh, kind of cardboard or thick kind of uh, plastic guide so that it can be used. So right now, you have the diameter of the bottle on the lock. The next step is to trace out in the center of the first circle another ring which is three millimeters inner. This is where the lock is going to be starting. Use a very special kind of steel cutter, which is for curved, for cutting curved metal sheets. Do not use the straight cuts because you will not be able to do the curves correctly. Cut the teeth in spaces of about two millimeters apart from the outside to the guideline that you have placed previously. This will serve as the teeth that will bite into the bottle. Now uh, is to bend out the teeth. Do not make them completely 90 degrees, but just 45 degrees. And the best way to actually make sure uh, that the teeth are done properly is to get another bottle and fill it up with cement. That way, you don't have to damage the very thin and fragile plastic bottle. So basically, push the teeth so that it fits correctly and it's ready to be put on the bottle. Do not start the bottle without 
making sure that it's well sanded. That way the glue sticks onto the bottle. What you do is the best one is to go at a diagonal at a 45 degree angle. That way we make sure that the bottle will stick as much as possible to the plastic. Now, one of the best indicators of this is about two inches wide. Uh, and this will allow the glue on top and the glue on the bottle to stick properly. Look at the bottle and make sure that there is no shiny part left. So now is to start with a silicon base or an epoxy glue and to make a line around where the bottle will be sticking. Make sure there's enough space on the top for the light to come in and about two thirds for the bottom. That way there's enough light to be able to go inside the house. So enough light in, but go, uh, enough to go out. So it's just a little above center. Now that you have the metal that is ready part, you have less risk when you put it in the bottle at this point. So what happens is as you squeeze in the bottle, you make sure by putting glue beforehand that it goes in between the metal sheet, lessening the risk of leak. So that your fingers don't stick to the glue, the best thing to do is to mix some water with some soap. Try to push in the glue as much as possible into the, all the crevices. This is very important so that if the upper seal, if the upper seal is breached, that you still have a very good uh, one on the bottom to hold uh, back the water from coming in. Now, do the same for the top. Make sure that uh, the, the silicon or the epoxy is about two millimeters or half an inch above the metal, uh, metal sheet. That way, the water will not go into the roof. If necessary, and you see a lot of spaces that doesn't seem to be covered or some metal pieces that seem to go outside, you can put more or put a second layer if you think that this would be safer. Better safe now than sorry and have a leak later on. Next, we're gonna fill the bottle with water and bleach. And the bleach is to stop the algae from growing uh, in the water and blocking the light coming into the house. Right now, we're gonna put uh, four cups of bleach. And this will be more than enough uh, to keep the water clean for the next couple of years. So right now, we're filling it up with uh, distilled water to make sure that there's no hanging particles or dirt in the water uh, that will in any way block out the sunlight. So we're trying to get as clear as possible light from outside to go into the house. Fill up the bottle all the way to the top. That way uh, you make sure that there is no room for uh, evaporation. It's very important to put a sealant in the bottle cap of the bottle. That way, no evaporation goes out from your solar bottle light. So. This bottle cap cracks under the sun, so you need to protect it by putting a sheath around it to make sure that the sun's rays does not crack the top of the bottle. Now, this is the most important part of the solar bulb, and so you must be able to protect it with the sheet.
So this is the first step on building your solar bottle light. The next one is to properly install it in the roof. So right now, we're going to be teaching you how to install on a roof. So this is our sample roof uh, so that you could see how we do it. Having a guide will make sure that you have a perfect cut every single time. By having a guide, you now make sure uh, that the bottle will fill correctly before putting on glue. So this is perfect, a perfect fit and you're now ready to glue it in place. Put the glue on the outer perimeter. So this is about an inch around the hole. Make sure that the glue is about an inch away from the tip to make sure that the glue does not cover the, the bottle light. Make sure that you can get a battery powered drill. That way you're not relying on having a, a, a power source immediately next to you. We're gonna be putting six pieces in. It's always good to rivet immediately after you drill to make sure that the holes are aligned. We have found out that by just adding a strip over the original sealant increases the strength of the waterproofing of the solar bottle light. Simply seal the top layer. This gives it a double sealing to make sure that the water over the next five years does not leak into the house. And the last step, which is often forgotten, but the most important one, is to seal the bottle from the inside. And this one is one of the best ways to make sure that you don't have leaks. Now, this is why you have to have a guide, because if you don't have a guide, the gaps will be so large that you might not be able to do a proper seal. 
And now you've just completed building with us a solar bottle light. <laughs>